Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heike and you're watching Stone Cold Coffee Crafts. And today I would like to kick off a new video series here on my channel, which I am going to call DP the Mystery with me. Um, this is going to be a 28 part series of weapon chats where I am going to work on the mystery diamond painting I got from Rachel last year. Uh, still have no idea what it is. I asked the boyfriend to straighten the canvas out for me. I have now cut it into 28 um, more or less equally sized chunks. And I plan to work on one of these per weapon chat. I'm going to show you the one little piece and then I'm going to cover it back up again. Um, and let's see how this goes. I plan to use um, kinesiology tape for it because that usually sticks to the um, cover paper at least a little bit and would probably allow me to stick it here around um, the sections to keep it down and at the very end of it all you and me both will learn together what this painting is so I'm going to keep it a secret for myself too and I'm sorry that um, the camera is shaking a little bit but I wanted to give you a better view and I ha had to attach my camera arm my holder to my desk now um, it's usually attached to my shelving unit on the right side of my desk but that always means that my hand is primarily in uh, focus and uh, since I'm right-handed so I thought I would try it like this so I have used um, random.org to create a number sequence and to decide which um, piece gets which number. I switched one out, full disclosure, it's not 100% random anymore um, because the section right next to the number one was number two. I didn't like that, so I switched it out with what was originally number 14, just to to keep it a bit more mysterious for a little bit longer. I mean, that one here is number four, so it won't be too long <laughs> anyway. Okay, so I'm trying to remember to put the unboxing up in the in the eye if you would like to watch it. I mean, I'm not showing what the image is. I'm basically just showing that I got the the canvas and that the canvas looks great and what the drills are like. Oh, maybe I should mention this. This is from the Manhui Long Store on AliExpress. They belong to the multiple Manhui shop family and they have <clears throat> a very superior quality when it comes to round drills. Um, not sure about the squares. I don't think I have a square from them. No. Don't think I do, um, but the round is is a very superior quality with loads and loads of facets. It's a different material they use for their drills than most shops that sell round paintings. And I have encountered this quality of drills only with the Manhui stores, with uh, Royal Diamond Painting, and the Oli and what's the other one called Fuyun. They are sister stores as well. They use this quality as well. Okay. Let's stop the whole introduction thing. Or maybe not. 50 by 70, that's why I chose to divide it in 28 sections. Each, each section is going to be 10 by 12.5 centimeter roughly, um, which makes it a 4 by 5 inch section. And it has 45 colors. So let's peel back the first. And it's going to be a very blue section. Right. <coughs> Sorry, I still have this tickly cough. I don't know. Just doesn't want to go away. So the first symbol I see here would be the, as far as the inventory list goes, is P, which is color 161. Let's start with this one. The Manhui canvases have... Um, double-sided adhesive it's a bit stickier than your usual adhesive um, it doesn't let you slide the drills as well as other double-sided adhesives do um, with which I personally don't have a problem because I am as you might know by now a single placer um, I usually don't use multi-placers 
and I don't have to adjust my drill placement a lot during diamond painting. Um, this has also training wheels or grinding circles or whatever you want to call the black circles around the drills, um, which means you have to be a bit careful with your drill placement to cover the drills. Um, usually they cover the circles pretty good if you, like I said, are a bit careful with your placement. I think you can actually see much better what I'm doing. So if the camera is shaking, like I said, I'm very, very sorry, but I only have these two options to set up my camera. It's either from the right um, and then my hand will constantly be in the way or it's going to be at the desk and then um, it might shake a little bit. I also have my lamp right next to me, so there's no no other no space for another. Um, uh, what is it called? Hmm. Tripod? I think it's a tripod. So yeah, we have to compromise a little bit. But who is actually watching these, right? <laughs> Most people if we are honest, are listening to, to the whip and chats. Um, it's the same for me. All right, so talking about something. Uh, that's, that's, that's always the big thing, isn't it? So how are you guys? Um, if I'm not completely wrong, this is only my second whip and chat I am recording this year, um, which is a shame considering it's already the 5th of February. Um, it is currently 10 past 4, so I hope I will be done by 5, because that's when Rachel and Mrs. Coffee are planning to go live in their group to reveal that big surprise they have been teasing. Um, and I absolutely need to be there for that. So I'm either going to be done or, I, or I'm going to stop this recording, <laughs> one of the two. Um, but yeah, how... How has life treated you since I recorded my last web and chat? Um, things at work are a bit quiet right now, still. I have officially taken over my first project um, this Monday. I wasn't supposed to do this. Um, I actually applied for a position as a junior project manager so that I could actually start where every project manager is supposed to start and um, I'm sorry I'm just realizing that this creates a bit of glare down here so wow shaking you again super sorry uh, that should be better I hope <laughs> um, I was supposed to be basically a project manager in training and then they decided, well, why don't you just finish this mostly already finished project? Uh -huh, okay, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> let's, let's send someone who basically only played at being a project manager for the last year um, out and interact with an actual customer. That sounds like a terrific idea. Um, but yeah, we are doing that. So my my former boss, who used to be my manager for the better part of 10 years, um, is my project sponsor. And of course, because Murphy is always on my on my side, he seems to have had a pretty bad accident over the weekend. He's in the hospital now. With an in injury, my boyfriend told me can nearly 100% only be caused by an accident. So the first thing he asked me is, does he drive motorcycles? Um, which I'm pretty sure he doesn't. I don't know, unless he entered a weird type of midlife crisis around his 60s, because he's turning 60 this year. Um, he never showed the tiniest interest in riding a motorcycle. <laughs> so I have written him because he is actually reading his emails from time to time. And I asked him how he is, but he hasn't gotten back to me. 
but I hope, I assume he had to have surgery and I hope it's going well. Um, for me, that's of course professionally now a problem because my project sponsor is actually the one who does need to make some financial decisions that I need. Um, and he's out now. Um, his stand-in, also out. Only has an out-of-office notice that he is sick. No idea what he um, is dealing with. Probably the flu, a cold, I don't know. So I'm pretty much twindling my thumbs and waiting for someone to tell me how to move forward with this last phase of the project. Um, because, um, of course, I got this project with serious issues as far as budget and man days to finish it goes. Um, oh, of course. My neighbors and their shopaholic tendencies drive me crazy. Um, so yeah, I have to figure out how to get the rest of the project that needs to be done done because I'm running out of of approved mandates for my engineers and engineers, um, techies in general, don't care at all about such trivial things as money. <laughs> I mean, it's a good thing they want to make the customer happy, but at the end of the day, their boss wants money from me, so we have to make sure we still have some. <laughs> and they don't understand when you tell them, you know, we have 10% of the originally approved hours left. Um, you're asking me for basically three times the amount of hours for the next two months. That's not going to add up. But, yeah. We are going to get out of it. It's literally the last packet. They call it packets of the project. There were six and we are now in the sixth. So we just have to finish it. We have to hand it over and it should be done. <sighs> Let's hope that's... And there's a P. Let's hope that someone will be available before I have to meet up with the customer and tell them I need more time and money from them. All right, so next one, do we have ease? We do not have ease, but we have minor A's. And minor A's are 311. Another blue. So, yeah, other than that, things have been quiet. It's not enough to fill my day. Right now, I am waiting and seeing. I have told my future manager that I am by far not at my limit as far as work I can take on goes. Um, he's aware, I don't know if he cares. So far he hasn't said anything. Probably when they notice that I don't really make money, <laughs> they will complain. Um, but what, uh, what do I care? Um, <coughs> still with this stupid cough. So last Thursday was actually pretty mm, sad day at the office. Um, our our lady at the reception, um, which we all, who we all loved very much, uh, was let go, and Thursday was her last day. And yeah, there were lots of presents. There was cake, there were even flowers, and lots of tears, to be honest. And lots and lots of anger. <laughs> because, um, yeah, one single man in this office decided 
she won't need it any longer. And the financial situation of the company was so bad that the receptionist had to go. That person being our site manager. And that guy has been on my shit list since I had to do the, the office move. Because he is he's basically impossible to work with. He's the type of person, maybe you know that, type of person too. Um, once upon a time when he decided to go to university and get a degree, hi kitty, he also decided he had about three years to waste on, on a doctorate. So he went to the PhD program. He, cat, 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 stop it. And, and no, if you want to lie down, go there. Um, he wasted a few years in the doctorate program and he got a doctor's the title, which now seems to be he actually has hang out hang ups about people not using his doctor's title so not calling him doctor which me personally i think is so stupid and over the course or course of the last cat please last few months um I actually learned we have quite a few people with a PhD in our office. Why didn't we know? Because normal people usually are mature enough not to define their value. And I'm sorry that the cat keeps jostling the camera um, by their title. Their stupid, stupid title. Cat, cat. You are going to cause a disaster. So, if you want to lie down, lay down here. And she's thinking, you are not the boss of me. Uh, I have another idea. Look, you're bad. Lay down. Let's hope she lays down in it. Yeah, I'm going to take that away. I know it's smelly. Now, yeah, looking good. Maybe we'll have a bit of peace here. Um, so he is, he is insisting on people calling him doctor. He is throwing a fit if people don't do it. Um, I guess we should be lucky that we, as his co-workers, are allowed to call him by his name instead of his title. But it's just so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Oh, kitty, come on. Stop it. I'm sorry. But she finally laid on her. So maybe she will spare us. Yeah, you are cute, but you're also the devil. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> so basically, he's not not our boss, not of most of the people in our office, but he was her boss because he holds also the title of site manager. Um, quite honestly, in the last few months, I have tried to learn what he actually does because site manager is only... An added duty, so basically each office does need to have a site manager, an official one. He is the official site contact. If some of the central um, functions need to get in contact with a person on site. So that's not actually a job. That's just the cherry on top, I guess. You don't get anything for it except an addendum to your um, contract. And that's it. But no one, literally no one can tell me what this guy is actually doing all day when he's not causing people to want to commit suicide by stupidness. So, stupidity, stupidity, sorry, wrong word. <laughs> 
So he decided in November when her contract was she was on a temporary contract, a one year contract, and um it was going to run out on in January, end of January, and in November because you have to um go to the social welfare and tell them that you might be out of work in three months when you are on temporary contracts and don't know yet if it will run out or be um, extended. And in November, he basically told her um, that it was not going to be extended. He was also very open about the fact that it was not going to be extended because he didn't want it. He was very adamant about the fact that she was impossible to work with, too slow on the uptake, um, that she was wasting too much time um, with people in the office, you know, having chats and stuff like that. But that's basically her job, to be honest. I mean, she, yes, she's a receptionist, but frankly, we are an IT service provider. We hardly have visitors to our office. We don't have a big wig management type person on site who might need to represent something to the outside. Yeah, we have a few doctors and one who basically defines his whole existence by these two letters, but also he never gets any type of visitor that is not part of our company as well and just comes in from a different office somewhere in Germany. So basically her main function would have been um, site administration. So she was basically the, the primary point of contact for anyone who needed any kind of support when it, when it came to office related things. And that also meant that she spent a lot of time just chatting away with the people working at our office. I mean, back in the day when I finished my um, apprenticeship program, I couldn't get a job as um, in the field I actually had apprenticed in. So I became a site admin for that boss I spent 10 years with. Um, and I became his personal assistant. That was not at all what I did in my apprenticeship. I was an honest to God IT person. So, um, so I know what what the duties of a site admin are. And basically, what that boss back then told me um, was one of the expectations I have of you is that you will always have an open ear for anyone here and anyone on my team who needs someone to to talk to and who needs a bit of of basically support by just being listened to um you are basically um what we call literally translated the good soul of this office you know the the one person who mother hands them all which was funny because I was, I think, uh, twenty years, twenty years, everyone's junior. <laughs> but okay, um, and that's that's what they are supposed to be. So she is supposed to spend more time than the average person in the um, in the break room and chat with people who come in for a few minutes to get a cup of coffee or something like that. <coughs> but for him, that was just wasting time. I mean, considering his people skills, I probably shouldn't be surprised. He has none. He has literally none. So the the things, things I should th say, until last Thursday, I only knew about one thing. But the th things he said to her. Um, for example, when he told her, we are not going to extend your contract. Um, a normal person, a normal manager would have said, I'm so sorry. Um, and... It was great working with you. Even if he didn't feel like that, he shouldn't tell her you were just the worst I ever knew and etc. PP. But what he actually said was, um, well, that's very sad now that we, ha we have such a nice reception. Wow. <laughs> wow. And Thursday I learned it was even worse. 
Um, another thing she he said to her, and she kept to herself until she had really left. We were out for dinner last Thursday, and that's when she told us. Um, he also said to her, well, you have organized everything now. Um, we don't need you any longer. <coughs> I beg to differ. I really beg to differ. A, that's an a-hole thing to say. B, um, no, she is still needed. I mean, <laughs> I was in the office yesterday. Let me tell you, just small things. The coffee machine looks disgusting. It really looks disgusting. It's one of these um, machines that pr produces fancy stuff. Um, and... It probably got cleaned because there is someone who is now responsible to clean it. Or oh, I think there are even two someones who are. Didn't work in the past, but let's see how it works now. Um, so the cleaning program for sure was run. But that thing um, for this milk, for example. So there is a lot of splatter all over the machine. And our machine was never dirty on the outside because she went in there and wiped it down. That thing looked like, ooh, yesterday. And that's, that's the most minor thing I can think of. Our cleaning lady does not clean the coffee machine. She is not, and people are going to learn that, I think. <sighs> also, no one is opening the door. Also a fun thing, our dear little site manager decided not everyone is going to get a key to the office. Nice. <laughs> so some people are actually dependent on the fact that when they use the bell, that someone gets off their butt and opens the door. Yep, didn't work so well. So, yeah. I am looking forward to seeing how stuff like mail will go now. I assume it will not go well. <laughs> but yeah, we don't need her. The sad thing is she would even consider to come back if he would not be her boss anymore than she did, if she did. Um, there's another manager in our office who tried everything to get her on his team. He said, I, he talked to this site manager and said, I'm, I'm going to try to get her on my team. She can still do the rece reception stuff then, um, but she will be officially my employee. I have to deal with her and you don't have to deal with, with anything any longer. But he didn't manage because this was a few days after our European management decided that our financial situation last year was so bad that we wouldn't hire anyone. And basically extending a temp contract is the same as hiring. So yeah, didn't work out. But I think maybe they haven't completely given up yet. She doesn't have a new job yet. She decided after she had a few interviews that didn't go anywhere and um, actually was also down with with um, a super nasty cold for several weeks that she was going to take a four-week break and just um, basically put the whole thing behind her and try to do something for her well-being before she decided to jump back into the whole madness that is finding a new job. She's also not not 100% well, you know. Um, in our company, people who are hired for the reception generally have some kind of uh, disability, um, you know, an official grade of disability due to some health issues. So she could either be physically um, disabled, like in a wheelchair or something like that, or she could have a condition that would make her not able to work 
a regular job full time, which was the case in her case. She was several years ago diagnosed with diabetes one and it is actually a pretty severe case. So she is, she is basically not able to wor work a, a full work day and then not in the same, in the same manner a healthy person would be. She's a bit slower. She needs to take more breaks. She can't get agitated too much um, because that's also taking in, an influence on her um, blood sugar and yeah. And that was fine. That basically is, is more than fine for someone who works at the reception that is very quiet because the company doesn't have a lot of reception stuff going on. Um, wouldn't recommend it for our headquarters, for example, but there we have um, always two at the same time, I think, so. Yeah, so she's gone now. We miss her like crazy. It's just not the same. She was such a happy person, you know. First thing she did every morning was walk through the whole office and um, wishing everyone a good morning. But he's happy now. <laughs> Trying very hard not to swear. So yesterday was her birthday. Also a nice birthday present, right? But I, I think once she, she uh, had time to get back on her feet, basically, and not feel as pressured and... I would say mopped, quite honestly. <coughs> she will probably realize it was for the best. But it's just so sad if it's one person. I mean, she literally said to me, you know, most of the of you guys I I like very much. There's only a couple I really don't like. And yeah. I don't know how often you encounter that. <coughs> I'm sorry. I haven't talked for long stretches a lot recently. Um, yeah. So that was our week last week. Let's hope we are not going to repeat this anytime soon. But I hit a, f a bit of good news in there. So it seems like we are going to face some kind of restructuring effort very soon. I'm still keeping my fingers crossed that certain very expensive, very useless employees, you can guess who they are, um, might maybe part of the restructuring in some kind <laughs> or other. <laughs> yeah. I can be very ventral. It's just treating people like that goes completely against what I believe in. And I've I've experienced his non-people skills last year myself, so I know that she is not making this stuff up. I know that he is um I don't know. There is there has to be some kind of of mental thing going on. He literally has no empathy. He has no social skills. He I can't understand how someone cannot grasp the concept that telling someone they were going to lose their job and wasn't it sad because now we have such a such a, an, a nice reception is not exactly the thing you say to a person like that it, it, it blows my mind and you know last thursday she got presents from so many of our co-workers in the office and the team that tried to get her on their team actually gave her a very nice card and she showed it to to the people she was so happy about that thing and and the guy who works closest to our site manager <laughs> kudos to him actually usually i'm not his biggest fan but he turned around and told him see now you know who's the loved one here in the office and <laughs> And and the site manager actually 
he looked at that and he looked very stricken. And then he said, I don't understand why they didn't ask me to sign that card. Oh, you don't? Huh, strange. He also brought her flowers and uh, wanted to give her a hug and everything. So he's, I don't know, something is wrong with this guy. Something is wrong. This can't be normal. Clearly can't be normal. Oh, yeah. On other news. I have been going to the office more because now I actually have people in my office working with me. Officially. <laughs> I mean, they are all project managers, but, you know, if you have your... your boss in your own office and your team in your own office you actually have a reason to go there so I have been trying to go there more often um, which also led to the fact now that our office is much smaller than it used to be that I got to know a couple of people I could have done without <laughs> you know there are quite a few people and most of them are in their mid 50s to late 50s who are currently between assignments and there are some of them who are actually also not doing anything to change the situation so they are fully buying into the the theory or the narrative that the company needs to provide them with an assignment that fits their job description, contract, that needs to be exactly the same thing they used to do because that's what they want and they are not, not flexible at all. Um, and these people are what we call people on the bench. Um, basically eating up money, not doing anything useful. And one of these guys sits now with the project management team because that's as furthest away as he can get from his boss in the office because he has been forced to come in. So he's one of the bench people and it looks like um, when they try to reach him, he has been unavoidable multiple times. So usually our... Um, working time model works on trust they trust us that we work the eight hours we are supposed to work whether we do with that from home or um, from the office or the starbucks in the town over or whatever they trust us that we actually do work mainly this is proven by the fact do you get your job done or not if you're on the bench, you obviously don't have a job. You're still allowed to stay home, which I think is very nice of a company to do. Um, but if your manager wants to reach you during working hours, you have to be reachable. Otherwise, yeah. And it seems he mucked that up. And now they are forcing him to come into the office. Which is... As far as punishments goes, I guess totally fine with me. My problem is he is sitting with my team. And all he does all day every day is being a negative Nancy. He has one co-worker. I think he is about 100 kilometers away in a different office. Um, and those two talk on the phone Sometimes three hours without a break. And they the only thing they do is badmouth pretty much everyone and everything they can think of. And I just can't any longer. I can't. I'm so... <sighs> I'm, I'm actually hoping for conference calls so I can put my headset on and drown him out for a while and he's also very very eager to repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat his his health history from end of last year because he blah. 
he had a bad a bad health scare i guess he had to go to the hospital for a few days and i don't need all the details and i don't need them x amount of time in a few weeks but that's what's happening <laughs> and there's basically nothing we can do we can't tell him to go somewhere else because everyone can choose where they sit there are there is a bit of a assigned area like the area i am in is actually supposed to be for the project management but no one can tell anyone else that they can't sit there come first sit first is basically what we are doing in this office because we downsized it to 45 desks and we have officially close to 100 employees most of them never come in um there is a hard core of 25, I think, that come in every day. And then there is a soft core um, of people like me who come in two to three days a week. Um, so we usually don't have an issue with not enough desks. But he wants, don't, doesn't want to sit with his manager, who is, again, that guy. Um, and that manager can't tell him where to sit. So he's sitting with us. No one can stand him. There's always a dark thundercloud wherever he is. And isn't that so much fun? <laughs> Honestly, my patience ran out when he started bad-mouthing one of the projects I did last year. Um, because he didn't like the pictures of the result, which is none of his business at all. But he doesn't get tired. To repeat to anyone who doesn't want to hear it how bad this office turned out and how ugly this looks and look at the furniture. I don't know. Always strikes me as odd why people are like that. I get that he doesn't want to be in the office. I get that he thinks he's entitled um, to be catered to by his employer. I know he's old enough and has been on the job long enough that it's probably true they can't fire him. That's the thing. The older you are, the longer you are with the company, the harder it is for the company to fire you. I mean, firing in Germany is hard in general if you are on a permanent employment. Um, it's basically impossible. But, um, yeah... It's it's so annoying if you see someone like that. It's so, so annoying. And that's when you wish for for less strict um, rules and laws, quite honestly. Because that's the one thing when, when you when you have someone like that, that is just hurting everyone in so many ways. Because for example, his salary they have to pay him even though he's not working would have easily covered two of our receptionists i would have preferred the receptionist <laughs> believe me uh, in case you are hearing shouting that's my neighbor from above sounds like he has a shouting match with one of his daughters I mean, that guy doesn't have an invoice, uh, indoor voice at all. But if he starts um, fights with his daughters, um, yeah. <laughs> it feels like he's right next to you. I wonder if it's the birthday girl, because the last yesterday one of his girls had her birthday, which we learned when he started to sing happy birthday at midnight. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but basically that's what what has happened in the last few weeks. I have spent a lot of time, a lot of my free time stitching. I was supposed to start on my diamond painting of the month on the first, but honestly, I haven't yet. Darth Daddy is still untouched. Um, but I started I started my old forest embroidery kit. And if you're interested in that, I'm going to link the 
unboxing up there because I did an unboxing for it. And I started that one on Friday. And this is so much fun to stitch. It's, it's incredible. Um, so I have not wanted to do something else yet. So usually so far, or well, what, what has happened last month is that I usually diamond paint after work because stitching um, takes a lot more concentration. For example, I tried to record a stitch with me yesterday and the day before yesterday. I just can't do it. Um, I can't cross stitch and talk. It doesn't work. When I talk, I stitch things that are not supposed to be where I stitch them. <laughs> and if I concentrate on stitching, I completely forget what I'm going to say. So that was not fun. I hope it's a learning curve. I hope at some point I can actually do the stitch with me. Because I love stitching. <laughs> I have no idea why I haven't done it in the last 25 years. Um, I think because it's so daunting. Stitching is a bit like a, a big, big, big diamond painting. Um, it actually takes a bit of... <coughs> of of work to get it started, you know, to get you into the mindset to actually start it. Um, or at least for me, it's like that. I'm I'm a person who can get totally in a finishing frenzy. So if I'm close to a finish, you have seen it with my diamond paintings, I can suddenly turn into a crazy person and uh, finish a quarter of a, of a 50 by 70 diamond painting in just a day. Same for cross stitch. Um, the closer I get to finish, the more I want to stitch. But starting the whole thing, that usually takes quite a bit of of mental cheering and come on, you can do it. <laughs> and I think that's the reason why I didn't pick it up. I bought a few cross stitch patterns years ago. I'd say about six or seven years ago, and I actually also got as far as to buy the floss for one of them, and then I never, never started it. That was still way back when I uh, was mainly card making, but I always, always, always wanted to go back to some kind of, um, and I'm sorry that my camera is now focusing on my hand instead of um, instead of the Jism canvas. <laughs> Brain farts, they are real. It's was something I was I always wanted to pick up again and, and then never did. But I think I have now crossed that particular threshold. So I started on this Owl Forest embroidery kit, the Bayoun cat, and... Um, I've been working like a crazy person on it. So I'm I'm now on day five. Uh, yesterday was day five. To d was yesterday day five? Yeah, yesterday was day five. Today might be day six. I don't know because um, I'm very tired today. I might take a break. Um, I think I can have it finished before my next floss tube video. I did a floss tube video last week, a week ago, so that would mean one more week. And I think I can actually get it done, which would be amazing. So I wanted to do the stitch with me, but that was just a lost cause. Knowing myself, I will keep trying. It's the same as with these whipping chats. Um, but that also brings us to you guys. Um, because I would like to involve you in this. So if you have anything you would like me to talk about, um, any question you have, I know a few people suggested um, a couple of things, and I think they were Germany-related I have to look these these comments up because it was quite a time ago. Um, but if you have anything, I'm going to, to note everything down that you post in the comments that you would like me to talk about. I will note that down and I will try to do that. Um, 
because quite honestly, this is the first of 28. We have 27 ribbon chats to fill. And I don't want to fill them with me being grumpy about what happened in the office. So <laughs> I find that not very entertaining when it happens. And I have to say, while venting the frustration is sometimes helping, um, I don't want to spend my weapon chats doing that. <laughs> On the other hand, nothing much is happening because I basically spent my days either in the office or working from home and then crafting. So that doesn't really lend itself to very entertaining stories most of the time. I wonder if I can somehow change the angle of this so you will even see better. And without the shaking would be good, but I don't think that this is going to happen. <sighs> anyway, it's five to five. Dang, the time is running. I will have to to stop this in a moment because I really want to see the surprise. I have an inkling what it is. <laughs> I think everyone who has has had a look in the group today has. Um, but I still want, want to be there for the live. Because if it is what it is, it's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, if you can think of anything, if you have some question if there is i don't know a tag you saw and you want me to do just put it in the comments let me know i'm going to prepare these things a little bit better and like i said i would like to keep most of of the office rents out of it they are fine from time to time they are going to happen um but i don't want them to happen every single week and Remind me last week that I put the cat bed up right away because now she's finally quiet. And isn't that nice? <coughs> That's another thing with my attempts at recording a stitch with me. She gets into everything. Um, so she, she, she was lying down on my pattern. She was lying down on my notes. She was clawing at my bobbins with the floss and... Oh. <laughs> And all the while you're trying not to miscount where to put your next stitch. And speaking about next stitch, um, I have ordered more from the company where I got the Bayoun cat from. Of course I did. Um, I have a feeling I will pretty much buy anything they have in their shop because suddenly I like the th aesthetics of that very much. <sighs> Sometimes I hate myself. <laughs> So um, the next two kits are already in Germany at Customs. Um, they have reached today the state where I think they are going to decide that they are going to send it to my local customs office. And I might have a pickup by the end of next week, I hope. Because right now they are super slow. Um, looks like they are only shipping stuff from, from Frankfurt Customs to the local customs offices once every two weeks, which honestly is unbelievable. <laughs> but yeah, what can you do? So I'm going to pause this for a moment. You won't even notice and I will get back with you. Um... Once the life is over, I'm going to keep working on this. So please don't, don't be mad, but I don't really have that much left to talk. And I think with the two clips I have right now, we are close to an hour. So be back in a second.
that did take a bit longer than I thought it would. So I have nearly finished my section. Um, I have actually recorded it and uh, you have seen it. I have put it as a time lapse before this last clip. Um, but yeah, exciting news. Um, if you are not a part of the group red, which I doubt, um, I'm going to put Mrs. Coffee's and Rachel's Facebook group link down below. You might want to join. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> check it out anyway this is where i'm going to wrap it up today i think i have probably said nothing and all i wanted to say at once as always it probably was rambly it probably was very grumpy and i'm sorry about that i hope the next one will be a bit more upbeat and less i want to kill this guy who is just a big butthole <laughs> Sometimes life is just like that. Um, so anyway, one more color and this first section is done. The colors are very intrig intriguing. Ooh, bad English day today. Um, there are actually quite a few I am not sure I have worked with before. For example, this one, which is 3768. Um, not sure I've seen that before. So the only thing I know, Rachel said to me when she gave it to me that this was a good painting for winter. So this is going to be exciting to learn what it looks like. But like I said, I'm going to tape up this section once again. I'm going to take a picture for Instagram and then I'm going to tape this up again and keep that as close as I can until the whole thing is done. And the current plan is to, to do one per week. So let's see how that works out. Um, yeah, that's it for today, guys. If you like this video, please, you know what to do. Leave a thumbs up, etc., etc. Not going to get into that. Um, I'm going to give you a bit of fluffy cat before I completely end this video. So if you would like to see Miss Lola like she is right now, sleeping ha happily away on my diamond painting in the middle of my desk. <laughs> I'm going to put that right next, right after this um, this clip. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to shut this down now. I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and we will talk to each other very, very soon. Thank you for joining me, guys. Bye-bye. Hey kitty, wanna say hi to the people? See, that's cats for you. Now she has nothing to say. Now she's deeply asleep and happy and she really wants me to leave her alone. <laughs> Look at that little footsie. Hey baby. You annoy me, human. You really annoy me. <laughs> Bye, guys.